now we already talk about the growth and decay of sound energy in the room right so let's start with the total energy e e total which is nothing but the energy density into the volume of the room i'm using a capital v for volume of the room so this is the energy density in the volume of the room so the change in this energy with respect to time which will be e d total divided by dt will be v into de by dt plus e dv by dt now of course this term is zero because this is the change of volume of the room typically a room's volume will not change in reality if you have persons coming in and out of the room definitely the volume might change but comparing to the total volume of a big hall this volume because of the occupants will be very less which can be neglected so we can take the volume of the room to be constant so this term will be zero so any change in the sound energy of the room will be due to the change in the energy density of the room into its volume so this is what we have and uh, how does this happen we are talking about growth of sound energy so typically v d by dt will be p the power of the sound source minus the total energy absorbed which is e v uh, we have summation over uh, s a by 4 so this is the power sound power this is the power of the sound source the energy given per unit time this is the total energy observed by all the surfaces in unit time the difference will result in the increase in the time increase in the energy so i can uh, I'll divide this equation by v i'll also take this to be a for convenience i just call this summation as a right the a is not area a is a summation of all the areas into their absorption coefficients i call that a and i divide this equation by v so i have de by dt is equal to p by v minus uh, v a by 4 v into e so this is the velocity of sound and this is the volume of the room let's call this quantity as alpha again for convenience so I have uh, DE by DT is equal to, I have P by V, you know, uh, I want to write it in terms of alpha. So what is alpha? Alpha is uh, VA by 4V. So we are missing VA by 4 here. So we will multiply and divide by VA by 4. So this now is alpha. So I have 4P by VA alpha minus E alpha this is alpha right so our alpha is this much right now i just rearrange this equation so the equation now is uh, i just bring this term here so de by dt minus e alpha is equal to 4 p alpha by v a now i'm going to multiply the equation by e power alpha t it's a simple trick so i just multiply the entire equation with e power alpha t so i will have de by dt into e power alpha t plus sorry my oh yeah plus this is plus actually plus e into e power alpha t into alpha is equal to 4 p alpha by v a into e power alpha t if you look at these two terms this is nothing but the differentiation of e into e power alpha t because we will have uv method so d e d u v d u which is d e by dt into alpha t and uh, u dv u is e and dv will be differentiation of this which will be e power alpha t and alpha so this is nothing but this is this term is nothing but d by dt of e, e into e power alpha d which is equal to 4p by v a into alpha into e power alpha t why we did this it's obvious because now this is easy to integrate we have only one differentiation term here so we can simply integrate this so we can directly integrate this so i'm going to integrate this equation here so integration of this is simply e into e power alpha d so integrating should i write the integrating 
So integrating this is e into e power alpha t is equal to integration of this. If you notice all these are constants, so you can just write them as such 4p alpha by Va. Integration of e power alpha t is e power alpha t divided by alpha. So this cuts the alpha here. So we have 4p by Va into e power alpha t. So that's the integration result. Now we have this equation. Let me write the equation once again without this alpha cut. So we have 4p by uh, Va into e power alpha t. Of course, we'll have a plus k, the constant of integration, because here this integration was done without any limits. So we'll have an arbitrary constant k. And it's easy to find the arbitrary constant k. We can use the boundary conditions. So at t equal to 0, the time when we switch on the power source, before that there is no sound energy in the room. So the moment we switch on the power source, t equal to 0, the energy in the room will be 0. E will also be 0. E will be 0. So substituting this, this term becomes 0. 0 is equal to this becomes 1. E power alpha 0, right? E power 0, anything power 0 is 1. So we have 4p by Va plus k. From this we can see that k is equal to minus 4p by Va. So this is the constant of integration which we have evaluated. So I can substitute this here, the value for k in my equation. So I'll have minus 4p by Va. Now I can simply uh, rearrange this equation, bring it into a compact form. What I do is, I have e into e power alpha t. I just take this entire thing as a common factor. So 4p by Va into e power alpha t. So I have 1 minus, we have 4p by Va here. What is missing is e power alpha t. I have to divide by that. So I have 1 by e power alpha t, which is e power minus alpha t. Now I can cut this e power alpha t. So I have e is equal to 4p by Va into 1 minus e power minus alpha t. So this is the growth equation. How the energy density of the room increases with time. Initially, when uh, the time is 0, energy will also be 0. Well, you can see here, because when you put t equal to 0 here, e power 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 becomes 0. So the energy becomes 0. If you allow time to go to infinity, when t reaches infinity, we have e power minus infinity, which is 0. So we will have e equal to, so when t reaches infinity, I should be putting t tends to infinity, doesn't matter. E will become 4p by Va. So when time goes to infinity, the energy will be 4p by Va, where p is the power, uh, power of the source, v is the velocity of sound, and a is the total absorption in the room. Right? If you remember the summation. So this is the maximum energy in the room. This is the maximum it can have because sound energy is increasing, and this is the value at t equal to infinity. So this is the maximum sound energy. I can call this as Em, maximum energy. So then my equation becomes uh, E as a function of T, right? E of T as a function of T is equal to E maximum into 1 minus E power minus alpha T. This is called as the growth equation. This tells us how sound energy grow. So this is the growth of sound. Sound energy, of course in the room or hall, whatever it is, right? We'll come back to this. But I want to find the DK equation. So what I do for the DK equation, I just go back to the equation we had. So the equation we had is something like this. We had uh, E into E power alpha T is equal to 4P by VA e power alpha t and uh, k is of course minus 4p by va. This k is a constant, right? k is a constant integration. So when you put, actually I can take the value of k, right? the absolute value of k, so I'll put a plus here. So when you put uh, t equal to, uh, sorry, when you put p equal to 0, you know, I have 
maximum sound energy here. I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about the decay of sound. So initially, I have maximum sound energy in the room. Now, if I switch off the power source, if I switch off the power here, right? Then this term becomes zero. The first term becomes zero. Then I will have e into e power alpha t is equal to this much. This is the maximum energy. Maximum energy we have in the room, right? Because if you see that e m here, we put p four p by v a. So that will be e m. And what is e from this one? So this one from this one, we can see that e is equal to. I just bring this term to that side. It becomes e m e power minus alpha t. This is the decay equation. So it tells us how the sound decay. So this is the decay equation. You can see that if you have uh, t equal to zero, if you put t equal to zero in this one initial time, that moment we switch off the power source, e power zero is one, so e becomes e m. So the moment we switch off the power source, we are having maximum sound energy in the room. If you allow t to go to infinity, we'll have e power minus infinity, which is zero. Energy tends to zero. So it tells us the energy is decaying, decreasing as the time goes towards infinity. So this is called as the decay equation. So when you have the power source, the energy increases according to this equation. Will reach saturation value of E m, and when you cut off the power source, the energy will decay according to this equation. We can try to plot them as a graph. So what will what will these equations uh, mean? Let's uh, try to represent them pictorially. So I take this as my time axis, this as the energy density in the room. Somewhere here is my uh, maximum energy, E max, which is 4 p by V a. So this E max is here. So here at t equal to zero, I switch on the power source. The power source is switched on, so energy rises exponentially rapidly and uh, tends to go to this maximum value at t equal to infinity. So this is how the energy grows. So this is the growth of sound energy in the room. And somewhere after a long time, we have maximum energy. At that point, if I cut off the source, I'm switching off the source. From that point, the energy decays exponentially. It will reach zero at infinity. So this is the decay of energy. Now we we'll go back to the original thing we started, which is the reverberation time t. Reverberation time t, by our definition, is the time taken for the energy to fall from its maximum value to one millionth of its value. Let's say this is the one millionth value, right? This is e m by ten uh, power six, the one millionth of the energy maximum. So this is here, right? So this time from the maximum energy when the energy is decaying to reach one millionth of the time. So this time here is capital T. This is the reverberation time, the time taken for the sound energy to reach decay from maximum to one millionth, and uh, this will correspond in decibels to 60 decibels, in a drop of 60 decibels. So we use the formula and uh, evaluate 